Guys, you know, here's a question that comes up in conversation. How do I make the jump from single family to multifamily? And as subtle as the differences look, the contrast between single family and multifamily properties can be quite big. If you're looking to take down a five unit or, or greater, the additional units under the same roof will impact the financial terms, time to close, budgets, and many other items related to that property. So sometimes getting into the deal can be easy, but at times it can also be a little frustrating. So it really depends on the personalities involved, how committed you are, and of course, how easy you are to deal with. That part is very important. You know, so despite all this, the process is generally the same, whether you're talking 10 units or 100 units. Investing in multifamily may seem intimidating, but if you learn and you partner with the experienced people around you, it doesn't need to be. You know, so before you go out and take down your, your $10 million property, I've outlined the five biggest differences that you need to know between single family and multifamily. So the first, the numbers. You know, the biggest difference in single family and multifamily properties is the numbers. You know, a single family rental, uh, you're going to be looking at the projected rents and maybe look at the neighborhood to tell you if it's a good deal. In a multifamily deal, you're going to look at that info, of course. You're going to look at rent, but you're going to look at a, a lot more data as well. You know, it's um, the, the bigger the deal is in terms of units, the more data you're going to need to rely on. Uh, you will be looking at, like, say, the T12, the trailing 12. You're going to look at rent rolls, maintenance costs, net operating income, vacancy drivers, and a whole bunch of other material. So you need to know what this means and you need to account for every dollar that goes in and out of that business. When you are starting out, trying to decipher the terms and the numbers can be a little confusing. But if you analyze enough deals and you're very diligent, it'll become second nature to you. So it really re requires you making a commitment to working through the numbers, working through your analysis and, and mastering it. Number two, more documentation. You know, it may make sense that a 50 unit building is gonna require more due diligence than a single family home. You know, along with the number of units, there'll also be a lot more paperwork and the degree of order required around keeping everything straight. You know, you'll want to review all the leases and make sure there's no heads on beds, meaning the seller is just putting people, anyone, in the units just to drive occupancy up. Uh, you'll also want to look at the rent rolls to see if there's any dips in occupancy, right? You want to understand where that is and uh, if it's cyclical or if it just happens to be just empty at, at certain points. You want to look at major repairs that were made and if the warranties are still in place as well, like the boiler, the roof, water heater, and so on, like major mechanical as well. You know, anyway, just understand it will sometimes take you getting your hands dirty on all that paperwork to build your own review and understand what's going on. You know, the banks are going to require this as well. And you're going to, and that's a good thing. You know, you want them to feel comfortable with the deal. And uh, they're going to want to look at how the deal appraises as well, speaking of banks. Now, unlike a single family home, they're appraised on comps and listings. A multifamily property is appraised by how much cash it generates because, as I said, it's a business. You know, in order to put both the buyer, the seller, and the bank at ease, putting these deals together takes a little more time. So all this means is that it's going to take a little more time to close as well. So the good thing here is that the bank is your partner. You know, if the documents you're sending to them don't make any sense, and they don't like the deal, it means you shouldn't buy it. Simple as that. You know, so because the bank is always looking to invest money. I cover this in other videos as well, but that's what they're looking to do. Number three, more capital. You know, this is the part where many people get hung up on. But here's the thing. If the deal makes sense and it cash flows, it, the money will come. You know, so there are so many ways to look at expenses in a multifamily deal. And, uh, but if you own a smaller deal, all the expenses are under one roof. And uh, so you, if that's the case. If something breaks, you need one dryer, or one furnace, or whatever it is. You only need one, one of these units. When you're looking at a bigger multifamily deal, you need to really make sure you have the cash reserves in place to handle the unexpected. You know, one big mistake that new multifamily investors make is not setting enough, not setting aside enough capital to renovate or cover incidentals. So, you know, for example, uh, the closing costs in a multifamily deal are going to be much more than on a single family property. And if you're syndicating, you, you could expect to pay an SEC attorney anywhere between $8,000 to $12,000 just to repair the, the paperwork. So, you know, between legal, environmental and uh, lender costs, uh, you know, things can add up quickly. 
you know, a good starting point uh, for a Class C property here, here in Ohio anyway, uh, is setting aside $1,000 per door. But, you know, again, that varies on your location. So, you know, judge accordingly on, based on that. Uh, number four, you need a bigger team. You know, for, for many in real estate, landlords that handle single family property may feel that one property is, is tough enough, right? But suffice it to, to say that the more units you have, the more difficult it is to manage everything. So if you plan on making the leap in the multifamily, I advise people to get property management when they hit about 16 units, all right? If, if you bought it right, there'll be enough cash to cover the cost of property management and still provide a healthy profit for you while allowing you to focus on buying more deals. In addition to a property manager, you need to find a good accountant, a good handyman, especially. Uh, you you want to surround yourself with a strong team that's going to help you scale and grow. You know, you this this includes a a bank, you know, bank partners. Uh, you have good property uh, inspectors in, uh, involved too, attorneys, and and much more. You know, I covered more of this in other videos as well. So, but if you do it right. You be spending more time finding deals and less time managing properties, you know. But first thing, start with an experienced property manager. Explain your vision and leverage their experience when you're speaking to brokers and uh, and looking at potential deals. That's that way the brokers will take you seriously when you say you're aligned with with X property management. And number five, more due diligence. You know, it it may take a couple of hours to research a single family home, maybe even less than that, but in multifamily, it'll take much longer. You know, of course there's tools out there. You can analyze a deal in, you know, 10, 20 minutes, but once you decide and you commit to a deal, you're in for a lot of paperwork, you know, getting, getting the paperwork together is, um, can be a little, little tough at times, but you know, you have to make sure that everything adds up as far as all the numbers are concerned, you know, but this is the part you're looking for reasons not to do the deal. And if it passes muster, you continue through due diligence and, and go on to closing, you know, so the due diligence phase is, is crucial and uh, you can't mess it up, right? That's the thing, you know, make sure you understand everything related to that deal. If you can't commit the time, partner with someone or hire a professional underwriter to do it for you, you know, anyway, so th there you have it. You know, when when done right, investing in multifamily deals gives you so many options, and it's just an amazing, amazing, improving way to build wealth. You know, so whatever your reason, you know, to build your long-term portfolio, increase cash flow, or leave a legacy for your for generations to come. You know, here are the these were the, the differences in the deals uh, of single-family, multifamily, and the methods of execution. So uh, understanding what you'll do what to do is going to make you totally successful. Anyway, guys, have a great night and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.